four, the teraphim have spoken vanity, and the soothsayers have seen a lie, and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore, they went their way as a flock. They are afflicted because there is no shepherd. Soothsayers are intellectual cabalists, <coughs> prophets are intuitive cabalists. In this lecture, we are going to explain the root of uh, both uh, individuals, since the soothsayers are black magicians, sorcerers, diviners, uh, and the prophets, of course, are the avatars, the apostles. And we have to know the difference and to understand how to polarize ourselves with the positive aspect of what we call clairvoyance. When I am uh, saying this, I have to state this. God, as a breath of life, as a wind, blows into my head so that the dust of the earth goes on top in order to organize this lecture. Later on, you will uh, understand why I'm saying the dust of the earth. Because remember that the brain is Adam. And, is, and it is written that Adam was made from the dust of the earth. Of course, all of this has a deep meaning that uh, we are going to penetrate in order to comprehend why it is written in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. As you already know, in the beginning is the first three words written in the book of Genesis, as well as in the book of John, Bereshith, which means in the beginning. The word is, of course, as this is explained there in the beginning of the Gospel of John, the creator of everything that was made, the whole universe. And uh, the former speaker explained that uh, this is why Bereshit starts with the letter Bet, which is related with creation. And if we count the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, we know that the first one is Aleph, the wind. The second one is Bet, with which we write Bereshith in the beginning of the book of Genesis. And Bet is related with the Sefira Chochma, which means wisdom. That's why many Kabbalists state that really when you said Bereshith, it is stated in wisdom, <coughs> God created 
in the beginning of the universe. Because Chokhmah is wisdom in Hebrew. And re it relates to the letter Bet, because it is the second Sephira of the tree of life. <coughs> so that's why in uh, esotericism, we state that Chokhmah, that in Christianity is called the sun, is the Logos. However, we know that the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are called the three Logoi, <laughs> Logoi <coughs> or the three Logos, because each one of them is a word, it's a Logos. But the responsibility of creation, according to Kabbalah, lies on Chokhmah, which is the sun. And that's why Chokhmah is called the word, the Logos. As the book of uh, John explains, and the word was made flesh. It implies, of course, the incarnation of the word, or the incarnation of Christ, the incarnation of the Son, the second aspect of the Trinity. So the song is called the word. So when we talk about the word, we talk about chokmah. And then we understand why, in previous lectures, we explain that within chokmah are placed the archetypes, which are those element, spiritual elements from the world of Atziluth, the world of God, that has to descend into the physical world, through the different dimensions, in order for us to inherit the Word of God. This word of God, Chokhmah, we stated, is represented by the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So when we said the word, we are of course referring to the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet that is, uh, or that are related with uh, wisdom. Mm. That's why the Master Samael on the or stated in one of his books, in the Hebrew words is hidden wisdom, or wisdom is hidden. Wisdom is chokmah. And the words, the Hebrew words, are written with the Hebrew alphabet, the 22 letters, which are the 22 arcana, Related with the 22 commandments. That's why it is written that faithfulness is the virtue of Chokhmah. He is the one that fulfills the commandments of God, which are 22. And that's why uh, the name of Chokhmah, the second Sephira, in the world of God, as we explain in other lectures, that in the world of Atziluth, the world of the archetypes, we find in each sephira of the ten sephiroth a holy name. And the name that appears in Chokhmah in the world of Atziluth, in the second sephira, is Jehovah, or Yohava, or Jahava, which are related with the sacred tetragrammaton, Yov, He, Vav, He. Here is the place where we find for the first time the sacred word of God, the tetragrammaton, which in the Bible is translated as Jehovah. We call him Yod Chava. It's Chokhmah. It's the Christ that contains the 22 letters. 
or the Hebrew alphabet. That is the word. So in other words, within Chochmah is Israel, which symbolizes all of these archetypes that we explain in different lectures that we had to develop. <coughs> so, that is why it is written that Moses, when he descended from the Mount of Sinai, was shining with the light of Jehovah. And it is written that when Jehovah, Chochmah, wisdom, the Son, the Word, Christ, was talking to him in the Mount of Sinai, he said to him, I appear to the former uh, prophets, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob with the name of Shaddai El Hai, which means the Almighty God, the life of the, the, the living Almighty God, which is the name in Yesod. In other words, in order to have the privilege of seeing the second Sephira, Chochmah, we had to reach the level of Moses. And of course, to go first into Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, working very hard in the world of Yesod, in order to have the privilege to be in Da'at, which is the Sephira above, below the Trinity, and above the six uh, sephiroth of uh, the tree of life in order to see that word that uh, Christ that Jehovah and that's why uh, it is written that Moses incarnated Christ that in Kabbalah of course is yod he bab he the manifested word in the flesh. And this is something that we had to comprehend and understand in order uh, to not to fall into confusion. Because we always state that this chokhmah, this wisdom, this sun is, is in the universe. It's not a person. It's the logos, it's the word, the sound. That's why it is, it is stated that in the beginning was the word. And that's why I stated. When God blows into my head, all the dust of the earth goes into my mind. And from there I take the letters in order to express what was in the beginning. Dust. Affair. Dust in Hebrew, in Kabbalah, is affair, which is written with the letters Ayin, Pe, and Resh. Affair, or oh, affair. If you take that Aleph out, or that, I mean, this Ayin out, or this word, you put the letter Samech, which is a circle, which is the letter S in Kabbalah. And then you find the word sefer, which means book. There are many books, like the Bible is a sefer. It's a famous book, which is called the Sefer Yetzirah, the book of the world of Yetzirah. So, efer, sefer, are of course letters, words related with the word. That's why when you say affair, it means dust could be also word, letter. And the affair is book. <coughs> of course, the earth also in Hebrew is written in different ways. 
But it comes into my mind now a phrase written by Daniel, the prophet. And that states, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. The firmament, of course, is Atziluth, the world of Keter. And they that turn many to righteousness as the star forever and ever. So you see there, there's a duality. That those that sleep in the dust of the air shall awake. Some for everlasting life and others for everlasting contempt. <coughs> so you see the duality here? To awake. What is this dust of the earth? If you read the book of Daniel, you find, of course, dust a fair, which it means to the letters, and uh, the word for earth is plural, because uh, in the Bible, uh, when they talk about the earth, they talk in the, in the way of Adama, they said, which is a feminine name, Adama, and actually it is said that from Adama, Adam was made. You see the same words, right? From Adama, from the dust of Adama, Adam was made. But what is this dust of Adama? Daniel doesn't say Adama. Daniel says Adamot, which is plural in Hebrew. When it ends on ot, it's plurality. What is this dust of the earth? Uh, you see, it's not one earth, but many. It refers, of course, to the physical body. If you don't know how to read, you might think, oh, sir, it's talking about the planet Earth. No. Adamot, plural. And we said in, in, in many times in different lectures that the physical body is feminine. Hmm? So from the dust of the earth, means from the archetypes that are placed on the earth, Adam is made. Hmm? But as, of course, in the way that we are right now, in the level in which we are, we are not Adam. Because the Adam that we are talking here is not the physical body. The Adam made into the image of God is that creature which has seven bodies. And is awakened into the image of God. And in order to create that Adam, we had to collect all the archetypes which are placed in the Garden of Eden. Adama, and that we explained already in many lectures, is a physical body. It's understandable that point of view. But this dust are all the 22 arcana, all the archetypes, all the 22 letters. Mm -hmm. This is how you understand it. Comes into my mind the prophet Enoch. It is said that when he heard about the dust of the earth, he looked into the air and he saw the Hebrew letters Related with a fair Aramot, dust of the earth, the Hebrew earth, which are seven in that uh, phrase. But the word Adamot begins with Aleph and ends with Tav. It's a plural word, but it ends with Tav. Is it? Adamot. Of course, refer to the whole 22 letters. They are hidden there. It is something very significant too. 
because Adamot, Dalet, is 4. Mem is 40. And Tav is 400. So you see there, 4, 4, 4. Plus 1, 13. Which is the, uh, the number of Keter, 13. The father of all the lights, or the father of all the archetypes, which is represented by the letter Aleph. <coughs> and of course, the letter Tab, as we explain in different lectures, is the seal of God. So, all of those 22 arcana, 22 letters, the dust of the earth, is in every one of us. But where? We explain how the forces, the archetypes, descend from the spiritual world into different dimensions and enter into the physical body, but into the superior aspect of the physical body, which is the vital body, which is called Eden, as we explain in many lectures. And through the metabolism of the physical body, those archetypes arrange, developed, and finally goes into that that we call the endocrine system. The endocrine system are all the glands of the physical body that create different hormones. The word hormone in Greek means to impel. to propel the hormones, as you know, travel in the blood and go to different places in order to impel the body to the activity. That's called the metabolism. The most powerful, of course, hormones and the final journey of all of those forces that come from above reach the sex. And in the sex, we have a sexual hormones, which has the more powerful hormones that a human organism creates or transforms. Because through those hormones is how we multiply and how we can do the creation. Because those archetypes of Chochmah, Christ, that is sent from above, are placed there in the sexual potency. You see? That's why hormone means to impel the organism. So in other words, in the hormones we have the force of God that impels the matter. That force is called Aun Aleph Vav Nun is pronounced own, which is the sexual potency or the virility on. And if you see this word begins with Aleph and then continues with the letter Vav and ends with the letter Nun. Aleph, as you know, is the wind in the head the breath of God that you receive in your nose, the letter Vav, is the spinal column. And the letter Nun, which in Aramaic is fish, are the sexual hormones, which crystallize in the sperm, of those sperms in a man, and ovums in a woman. So when we said on, we are attracting the force of above into the sex. This is why that is a powerful mantra on related to the sexual potency. On is precisely the impelling force of the sexual hormones in every human organism. That's one of the meanings of the sacred name of the master Samael on 
veor. Now, veor is another word that begins with the bav, which is the spinal column, and the other word is light, aor, or or. It's pronounced or. That light is pronounced with aleph, bav, and resh. Begins in the head, in other words, I mean, ends in the head. Because resh is the head. So when we talk about light, veor, is when you, of course, rises the force of your sexual potency to your head. That's veor. And, of course, this is something very important before I forget, because <coughs> it came into my mind now. It's about the word Samael. Do you know how you write the word Samael in the secret alphabet of Kabbalah? Samech is the first, which is the S. And then Mem, which is the letter M. Aleph and L, which is L, which means God. This is how you write Samael. Samael, of course, is made with the two first letters. Sama. The S, which is a circle. That's this letter Samech. That's how it's, it's written in Hebrew. It's a circle. A serpent biting his own tail. The Auroborus. This Auroborus is related with the chakra Muladhara. And the letter Mem is related with the chakra Shwadistana, the prostate of the uterus in a woman. So the two letters of the word of the word Samael are related first with the chakra Muladhara and with the chakra Shwadistana. And El is God, Samael. Now you understand why Samael has the wisdom of the tree of Da'at, which is wisdom. It's easy to see it, Kabbalistically speaking. And of course, even in the sounds, or I mean in the symbols of the planet Mars. See, the planet Mars is symbolized by a circle and a square in the middle. In the pentagram, you see the symbols of Mars in the arms of the pentagram. A circle and a square in the symbol. The square is the letter Mem. Because when you close the letter Mem, it's called Mem Sofit, or the end Mem. And the circle is, of course, the letter S. So you find there, in the symbol of Mars, Sama, Kabbalistically speaking. The square within the circle, or the cross, in other words, within the circle. That's Sama El. And that's why his wisdom is a wisdom of that. But of course, it goes two ways. Because we refer to our sexual potency that relates to the Muladhara chakra and to the Shwadistana chakra, to the prostate, into the testicles, or to the ovaries and the uterus, where we have the power of creation that we talk in many lectures, many times. So, of course, the sperm or the ovum is a fish. That's why it is written that uh, the fish swims in the water. Mem. And, of course, in the fish is the energy, Christic force of Jahava, of Yod Hava. Because the final journey is the sperm, in the noon, in other words. That's why when you read many words like on, aun, it's related with the letter nun, which is always pointing the sexual force, the sexual hormone, the soul sperm or the oven. You find many names in the Hebrew. Bible <coughs> with the letter Nun. For instance, 
Cain ends with Nun. So, if you know, if you understand that Cain means something in relation with sex, but also in relation with the head, because it begins with Kuf, which relates to the head. This is how, by knowing the meaning of the Hebrew letters, you see what is written and why the names of the archetypes or symbols in Genesis are written in that way. Enoch, for instance, have the letter Nun there in the middle. It is written that the first uh, son, or after Cain, was ejected from the Garden of Eden, which is also another noon there, he begot a son whose name was Enoch. Hanok is how he said, because beginning with Het. But we said Enoch. The thing is this. If you observe uh, the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, you uh, observe that this word Nun is in Eden. And Eden begins with Ayin, which is the eyes. And of course, follows Dalet, that our former speaker talks very extensive about the word, uh, the letter Dalet, which is door. So, Eden is the door. And the letter Nun is there, which is a sperm. That's why Eden is in relation with voluptuousness, with pleasure. Huh? This is how you see the meaning of this. And of course, because we are going into the topic of this lecture, which is soothsayers and prophets, we have to understand how are the soothsayers developed and how the prophets. But both of them have the root in that, in Eden, in Ajin. You see, even the word, the letter Ayin, ends also in Nun. Hmm? Because Nun is the sperm, is the base, the sexual hormones that impels, that creates the universe. In Nun, I told you, are placed the 22 archetypes in our sex, in our hormones. Everybody has that. But if you spell the noon, you spell the 22 letters out of your body. The dust of the earth goes out. If you transmute your noon, and then the dust of the earth makes Adam. Do you realize that? Because God creates. That's why Master Jesus of Nazareth said, You have to be born by the water and the spirit. The water, of course, as you know, is mem, your sexual energy, sexual matter. And the spirit, the fire, the word, which are there. That's why in Galatians says, To thy seed that is Christ, because Christ is Chokhmah, Christ is the Word, Christ is Jahavah, the 22 archetypes that we need to form in order to create Adam into his own image. So you are following this, you are entering into the mysteries of the soothsayers and prophets. Observe the letter Ayin. The letter Ayin <coughs> is 
a letter nun, which is open. You see, the letter nun is a line, vertical line, with two small verti horizontal lines, one on the top and another in the bottom. That's nun. They said that nun is a break, a, a broken vav, because vav is only one line like that. Broken vav means in the top and in the bottom. That's nun, which symbolizes a fish. But the letter ajin, when you see the letter ajin, you see an open nun. Like when you go up and you stretch yourself when you just oh, walk, that's opening the nun. And on top, on your legs goes another letter, which is called the letter Zain, which is similar to the letter Vav, with the exception that it goes exactly in the middle of the head of the letter Vav. Because the letter Vav is straight line like this, but the letter Nun is a horizontal line in a, a vertical coming from exactly the middle of that little horizontal line. So the letter Zain is precisely there on top of the Nun. This is why how you make the letter Ayin. That is indicating as something very easy to understand because you know that the letter Vav is a spinal column and is related with the right eye of God. And the letter Sayin is also related with the spinal column, but it's feminine. That's why they said that Vav is Adam and Ayin is Eve. I mean Sayin, Zayin. Do not mistake the letter Zayin with the letter Ayin. Ayin is the letter that is in the middle of the word Da'at. So, in other words, the letter Ayin is indicating us that the forces that come from above through the spinal column have the final journey in the sex, in the noon. So when you said Ayin, it says it's related to the eyes. But those eyes that see the mystery, because remember that the letter Ajin is in the middle of the word Da'at, and Da'at is knowledge, and it is, it is written, that is the knowledge of good and evil. And those knowledge of good and evil are precisely the two eyes of God. Where are those two eyes of God within each one of us? Remember that when we stated that the first triangle is related with the head, don't forget about it. Keter, Chokhmah, Bina, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are related with the brain. So in the pineal gland, we have the atom of the Holy Spirit. In the pituitary gland, we have the atom of the Son. And in the root of the nose, we have the atom of the Father. That's the Holy Trinity in the head. But these eyes of God in us are related with the two glands. The pituitary gland and the pineal gland. These two glands are the eyes of the letter Ayin. It could relate also to the physical eyes. But mainly because the knowledge that we are talking about here is esoteric knowledge. And that esoteric knowledge belongs to the internal dimensions, internal worlds. Belongs to heaven. We need to see that. To see that. When you read in the Bible that the prophet saw God, it's not written there with the physical eyes. Because in my own experience, 
When I have experienced and I have seen my own particular individual being, I have seen him with my internal eyes, not my physical eyes. Because God is not physical. That is spiritual. And in order to see God, you need to awake your internal eyes. There are two. One is in relation with the intuitive intuition, pineal gland. And the other is with clairvoyance, the pituitary gland. Actually, <coughs> the one related with the pituitary gland is double. You see? Could be a positive clairvoyance or negative clairvoyance. Actually, clairvoyance means clear vision. Hmm? Of course, there are many levels of clairvoyance or clear visions in relation with these two glands. But observe that in endocrinology, these two glands, pituitary and pineal glands, are related with the sexual glands. Both contribute with the development and activity of the sexual glands. So, of course, now you know why the letter ayin is in the middle of the word da'at. And dalet is the door. Ayin are the eyes based, of course, in your sexual potency. And behold the letter tab as well of da'at. If you observe, it is made with the letter Dalet, one Dalet, and at the end has a letter Nun. So Tav is Dalet Nun, together. That indicates that the end, the seal of God, the door, is in the sex as well. The door to leave hmm? or to enter. So you see two doors in the at, in the beginning and in the end. But the end is with the, with, with the letter noon again. Hmm? This is how you discover the mysteries of the of of, of the Sephira, the at. Hmm? Related, of course, with noon. So, that's why it is written <coughs> that the serpent said to the woman. We explained uh, before that the woman, Chava, or that uh, Isha, relates to the sexual organs. Because the sexual organs are the base for the two forces of Adam and Eve. In order for the brain to receive knowledge. It is written. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Kabbalah says that the left eye is evil, and the right eye is good, of the letter Ayin. Knowing good and evil, like the gods. You know that these eyes are always in the head where you find the Holy Trinity, the Logos, the Word, the dust of the earth, placed in the physical body. In other words, the dust of the earth, the 22 arcana, the archetypes, are related with the brain and with the sex, with Adam and Eve, with Ish and Isha, masculine and feminine. In our physical body. Are you following this? 
because this is very important in order for us to understand how this site is developed. How we know about good and evil when we eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. This tree of knowledge for the fruit, the fruit is the sperm and the oven. So, <coughs> the Word of God was created, or, or uh, 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 excuse me, everything was created with the Word of God. So, we were created in the sexual act, and we inherit that in our sexual organs. All of what we know, and all of which is the universe created by the Word, by that Word of God that was in the beginning, is of course what we know. Knowledge. Whether it's physical, whether it's internal, spiritual, or any type of knowledge that you read in a book, of course, comes from letters. In this uh, example, the Bible is written with the 22 letters, the 22 arcana, the 22 archetypes. And it's written in the book of Revelation. Who is capable of opening a book or that book? And it's written, it says that not, I mean, not everybody, not uh, nobody, on heaven, on the earth, was capable to open the book and to take the seals thereof. What is that book? We always state, we are that book. The human being is that book. Because we are made from the dust of the earth. Sefer, Efer, the dust of Adamat. The physical body. Adamot, in other words. Because each one of us has his own alama, physical body. So who is capable of uh, opening those seals according to the book of Revelation? Only the Lamb. And who is the Lamb? It's Chokhmah, it's the wisdom, it's Christ, it's the Word incarnated that takes those seals and uh, unveil the mysteries which are within. And when you unveil the mysteries within you, you unveil the mysteries without you. Because each one of us has the same. And every prophet wrote what he saw according to his own development. But we have to understand that at that time when Cain was born, because of the fornication of that humanity, when they spill the sperm in the oven, the war of God, you see, when they spell the war of God, now you understand why it says that the words of the sins are the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, the giver of life. But it's the word. To blaspheme is to pronounce or to utter the word in the wrong way. Or to pronounce yourself against the giver of the word. And the organs of the Holy Spirit are the throat and the sexual organs. So to be a blasphemy, a blasphemer is to be a fornicator in other words. Because you sin against the word when you talk in the wrong way or when you fornicate when you utilize your sexual organs in the wrong way. So that sentence, fallen as like a sharp sword, because all of us are fornicators and adulterers. There is no one that can escape from that. Sin against the Holy Ghost. So, fornication is the Spilling, the spilling of the noon out of the body. That's fornication. Because the noon, the fish, has Christ. 
There is a book in the Old Testament. It's called the book of Joshua. Yeshua. And of course, that means Savior. But this is, this is a book of Joshua, the son of Nun. This is how it starts. And that's why Yeshua, Jesus Christ, that came 2,000 years ago, was also called the son of Nun. And that's why they utilized the fish as a symbol of Christianity in the beginning, which is Nun. Uh, ictus is called fish in Greek. So this fish, Nun, is the one that contains Christ, is the seed in each one of us. So if we spill the Nun, we spill Christ, which is fire, which is the word. And when we spill, we spill the 22 arcana, the 22 commandments. We sin against the 22, all the commandments of God. In one single act. That's why it was written. With that when Adam, the brain, fornicated because of Eve, the sexual organs. He lost the word. He lost the 22 letters. Only two remain with him. Which the former speaker said was Shin and Tav. That formed the word Set. In other words... Only two letters, the fire and the seal of the cross, in order for us to be redeemed. But how, of course, when the noon with the sperm and the oven were out of the body in the orgasm or the spasm of the beasts, the word of God was out and the man was naked. Without the word. They knew. That's why it is written. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. The woman is a sexual organ. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof. In other words, she fornicated and did it reach the orgasm and gave also unto her husband the brain, Adam, with her. And he did it receive the consequences of that bestial act. And the eyes of them were open and they knew that they were naked. And they shoo fig leaves together and made themselves a prawns. I mean, the fig leaves, the symbol of the sexual energy. Feminine forces that are out. Creative forces. The eyes were open. But where? It is written, the Master Samael explained very clear. In the orgasm, the solar atoms, the Christic atoms... The words, the letters of the sacred word of God go out. And instead of those sacred forces, the organism absorbs satanic atoms from the world of Klipoth. And then rise to the brain. And this is how the brain, Adam becomes polluted with satanic devolving atoms from the world of Klipoth or the infernos, in other words. That Adam is the brain. And then the eyes are opened for Klipoth. And they know that they are naked. They are in evil now. They are no longer with the positive forces because they spell it. So in Klipoth, you find all of those soothsayers that developed their inner eyes through fornication. They have many excuses. The first one is, we have to have a child. 
we need to have a child. But that is, of course, the animal inheritance that is very alive in all of us. And all of us know how to procreate in the animal way. And every time that we fornicate, of course, the organism attracts the forces of Klippoth. Because in Klippoth, fornication and adultery are a law. And from fornication and adultery derives many other sexual degenerations, which are in Klippoth. Loss. Mm -hmm. If you accuse somebody in Klippoth of fornicator of an altar, you say they just shrank their, their shoulders and says, So, what's the big deal? Everybody in Klippoth is a fornicator in an altar. Mm -hmm. And of course, that is the falling of Israel into Egypt, into Klippoth. <coughs> and this is how. And at that time, in the ancient times, when Adam and Eve created Cain, which symbolized the fallen humanity, the mind, the animal mind, Cain had a son whose name was Enoch. When according to the Bible, Enoch was a great prophet, but not in this, in this, in this example. Enoch, of course, is that seer. In other words, humanity was initiated in Klippoth and starts seeing in evil. Or knowing evil, in other words. In this call, as we explain, is Ra. You see, the letter Resh is the head and Ajin at the end, which are the eyes. Ra means the way in which the head see degeneration. And since that time, humanity is, of course, developing in Ra, evil. Resh in a gene. The eyes are open in a negative way. But of course, as Daniel says, and some of them that uh, rest, let's, let's, let's read, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. We fell. And all dust of the earth, of course, return because it's written. You are made of dust and to the dust you have to return. That was a sentence to Adam. That dust are the letters that were in him alive. But when he fornicated, then that dust went out of him and returned to the earth. But, but they have to return. He has to return into the dust of the earth in order to resuscitate, in other words. So... The eyes were opened, and they start seeing, of course, the physical world and the infernal worlds, and knowing about evil. They become, they became, in other words, Enoch, a seer, but in an evil way, because Enoch is written, was the son of Cain, who was a killer. Of Abel. So this Enoch or seer, of course, is a type of vision that is developed in those individuals that study Kabbalah, but are fornicators. So a lot of them. What they see or what they bring are the satanic atoms from Klippoth and based on that they predict the events that are happening in the physical world 
Because unfortunately, all the events, but not all, some, but most of them, that happen in this physical world are the crystallization of Klippath, where we find the karma of this world. So the soothsayers can say many things because the ego that we have, which is Cain, belongs to Klippath, belongs to the law of reoccurrence. And the soothsayers can say many things about the ego when you go and consult them about your future. They can see in Klippath what's going on because the ego is the outcome of fornication. So there are, of course, the false prophets, which the Bible called Baalim. Because Baal is precisely that soothsayer that develops in Klippoth. And all of them that develop in Klippoth are called Baalim, which is the opposite of Adonai, which is the Lord in Hebrew. So, of course, Kabbalah. From, from the word kabel, which means to receive information. Hmm? So those intellectual kabbalists that are fornicators receive from klippoth. And that's precisely what we have to understand. Because there are many kabbalists in the world that know about the 22 letters, but these 22 letters that are, of course, in Klippoth, developing in their own way, or lost, in other words. Because the word is lost. So you have to find the word again that we lost because of fornication. And that's why Jeremiah... Uh, states uh, oh, don't listen, Jeremiah, excuse me, Sahariah in the chapter 10 verse 2 and 3 for the teraphim have spoken vanity and the diviners or soothsayers have seen a lie and have told foul dreams they comfort in vain. So therefore, there are many. It is not enough to preach. We have to follow the word. As the Apostle James says, to be a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, we just turn into a soothsayer. And there are many of those. So we have to be careful not to fall into the mistake of Becoming a soothsayer, a diviner, a sorcerer. Somebody that knows a lot of Kabbalah, a lot of prayers, etc. But in the end, when he is in the sexual act, he's spilling the noon. Even if he does it in a very holy manner. Because there are many of them that pronounce sacred words, mantras. In the moment when they are spilling... The seed, thinking that in that way it's going to be holy. No. Once you reach the orgasm, it doesn't matter in which way. If the noon, the seed, is spilled out of your body, the dust of the earth is coming out. So that Adam doesn't exist. Because the one, the creator, which are the word, the 22 arcana, are out. And you attract the satanic atoms from Klippoth, and develop the Kundavafer organ, which means this tail of Satan. And then you can start developing your sight, your ayin, but will be subjective clairvoyance, or unconscious clairvoyance, or infraconscious clairvoyance, related with Klippoth. Because it's superior type of sight, the divine sight of Ayin, is only possible to awaken with uh, chastity, 
when you don't spill the seed. When you transform the sperm and the ovum into energy and rise that energy in your sign and only to develop the divine sight. And that's why uh, <coughs> it is written that at that time when humanity fell in the crime of animal generation, they were black magicians that were the outcome of this. Soothsayers. Clairvoyants. But of Clipoth. Then, the, of course, the White Lodge did the effort in order to bring from those fallen individuals angels capable of knowing good and evil in order to return into the light and this is how Seth was born which is the third son of Adam and Eve that is written that when Eve had Seth he says God has replaced me Abel who Cain killed so in other words, set is replaced. Replacement of uh, Abel, which is the soul, but already coming from Klipoth. A soul that already suffered the consequences of his fornication. Because Abel, when he was killed by Cain, the mind, went into the lower earth. To suffer the karma. And when that humanity received the knowledge again of chastity, that avail, that soul within, within which the archetypes were placed, came out by the Savior and went up into the spinal column with the knowledge of evil, now of good and evil. Of course, the plan of the Elohim was to create a brain and a throat in order for us to create with the power of the word as they create with the power of the word, the Elohim. But the humanity at that time didn't know how to create with the power of the word, only with the power as animals. So that's why they separated the two sexes. And the man kept the masculine polarity and the woman the feminine polarity. In order to separate the, the, the two polarities of the sexual organs, in order for the brain to receive more strength and to develop it. And the throat as well. But unfortunately, the black magicians ruined the whole plan. And humanity, instead of returning into the tree of life, they keep fornicating and developing the evil sight or the evil eye, as you call it too, right? The evil ayin, the evil eye, which is very common in many, in many uh, cultures. Oh, this person is giving me the evil eye, they say. Meaning that the forces of Klipoth are transferred through the sight and hurt the other person. But all of us have that in different levels. Well, but the person that has this evil eye, magnetism, is really not good. But in some level, each one of us has that evil eye. Sometimes when you uh, look at a person and says, I really don't like this person, you are really applying your ego, the evil eye to him. Or to her. So that's of course Enoch, the son of Cain. That as you know, <coughs> evolved in Atlantis. And they became what they became, but they were destroyed. But there's something very significant here 
that Seth also had a son, which was Enosh, similar to Enoch, but actually this Enosh have another son, Cainan, and this is how the, the Bible says, Cainan had Mahalalel, and Mahalalel Hared, and Hared had Enoch again. You see, you find there, Enoch, the seventh. This is the seventh patriarch, according to the book of uh, Genesis. So Enoch appears again, but as a son of Seth, the seventh generation. Seventh generation. This Enoch of the seventh generation, of course, if you count from the bottom, since Adam is the brain of the physical body, Seth is the vital body, and then Enos, e -O Enosh, the son of Seth, is the astral body, Kainan is the mental body, Mahalalel is the causal body, Hared, the body of the conscience, or Buddhic body, and Enoch, the spirit, the one that walked with God is written. Of course, the one that always walked with God is Chesed, our own particular individual spirit. So we hold here that this great seer or prophet, patriarch, Enoch, before becoming Enoch, he was, of course, an evil of all of us. Because nobody becomes an angel or a god, an Elohim, without knowing evil. So Enoch was first the son of Cain. And after that, that archetype developed and became Enoch, the son of the seventh generation of Seth. The one that walked with God. And there is a book written that's called the book of Enoch. Very profound. It's how this great... Uh, Avatar, the great master, is a vehicle of a great angel. And if you observe this Chesed, Enoch, the seventh patriarch inside of us, develops according to the rising of the fire in everybody, according to the developing of the word. E -E -O -U -Ams, the seven vowels. And of course, that's why it is written that Enoch brought the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. He became an angel. The angel Metraton. And that angel represents Keter, the father, in the world of Atziluth. I mean, yeah, the world of Atziluth. But you find that name in the world of Bria, Metraton. That represents, of course, the world of Keter. And we always have stated that Enoch, the prophet Enoch, the master Enoch, is a bodhisattva. Of the angel Metraton, which is a very high angel, very powerful. But of course, he in himself is an archetype as well in each one of us. When you read the Bible and you read these two Enochs, are referring to the dissension and the opening of the eyes in evil and the returning of Enoch into the upper worlds, the world of the light, and opening his eyes and becoming a prophet of God. A real prophet of God knows about good and evil, but is developing in the upper direction. While a soothsayer is, is a stuck in Klippoth because he's a fornicator. The only way to go out of the soothsaying or diviner is by transmuting the noon within which the word of God is, is hidden. And then when that force of the noon rises in the spinal column and a gene are open again, and then we become like gods, knowing good and evil. So that's why the prophets knew 
because they were coming from below. When somebody was lying, he said, this is not a prophet. He's a fornicator. He's just a soothsayer. And he is not uttering the words of Jehovah because he's spilling the seed. We are prophets of Jehovah, they said. Jehovah said this, Jehovah says that, you know, because Jehovah is the word in them developed. And this is how the prophets say things and are exact and are messengers. So the messengers of, uh, of Elohim or Jehovah Elohim are the Hesedes, the Hasidim, we will say, the prophets that utter the commandments of God in that. They are awakened and know about good and evil. So you see the difference there? Both of them utilize that, the tree of knowledge, which is sex. So, both of them know about sex. The soothsayers teach black tantra or great tantra. And teach the people how to develop the sight. It is not as strange to see them clairvoyantly and with a lot of clairvoyance seeing things it is not rare to find them in the internal worlds awakened comes into my mind in this very moment Brutus the one that betrayed Julius Caesar that the master Samael talks about him in the mystery of the golden blossom the angel Adonai listen carefully here the angel of the night, who is the name of God in Malkut, to the prophets. That's why the master Samael always said, my great friend, the angel of the night, because he was following the Lord. Hmm? Told me in the internal planes, such and such fellow, between parentheses, Brutus, has awakened, he says, in evil and for evil. And how, how do you interpret that? In Ra and for Ra, he said in Hebrew, meaning that in the internal planes, this initiate or walk in Klippoth, because he was behaving in the wrong way, and was awakened, was not sleeping, because anyone that awakes in the in Klippoth, you know how to travel in the astral plane. I know many of them because I found them in internal planes. And they always behave very cunning, trying to deviate you out of the path. And they know that they are in the astral plane. They don't ignore it because they know how to go out, in and out, in and out. So remember, soothsayers and prophets know how to go outside of their body. Soothsayers go to Klippoth. Prophets go up. Soothsayers can uh, supplant any master and tell you wrong things. So, <coughs> this is how the prophecies or the prophecy of Daniel is fulfilled. That many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some for everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So, there are two ways then in order to awake, positive and negative, and the base is always sex, the sexual energy. That's why we had to study very carefully the Word of God. And in order to know how to polarize ourselves, with the positive aspect. Because the prophecy of Daniel is being fulfilled in this day and age. There are many that are awakened and seeing things. But it's not, too, it's not enough to awake. We need to awake in good, in the positive manner. That's why it is written that those that awake in the positive manner says, And God said, 
and God said, and no, I mean, and God saw, you see, that it was good. This is written in Genesis. Every single moment in initiation says, and God saw to see that it was good. But if we are awakening, awakening and know how to uh, go into the astral plane, that is not enough. We knew how to know how to awake positively. I remember, for instance, one night that I was falling asleep, and all of a sudden I saw a black magician coming and trying to hurt me. And then I just wanted to, you know, because I have a still ego, I just wanted to punch him. So I was allowing him to approach me, and when I punched him, my fist went through him like air and he was laughing oh I said this condemned is awakened and he was trying again and I was trying again to punch him I couldn't he was awakened in evil and for evil so therefore I said well better if I conjure him and then when I said the conjuration of the seven went away I just said to myself well, you just lost the enjoyment of punching him. <laughs> but I had to meditate now. They say, well, because, you know, when you have ego, you react in a negative way. That was a negative way to, of me re reacting, right? But of course, it happens many times. It's better to conjure them and push them away in their way. But they are always there in the internal planes. Very awakened. But the fact that they are awakened and they can tell you things doesn't mean that they are in a positive way. Soothsayers. They can know about a lot of Kabbalah. In this day and age, a lot of people know a lot of Kabbalah. But the only way to awaken in a positive manner is by being in chastity, by annihilating your ego, and by doing charity. Love in the conscious way. Not mechanical love. Because love is, love is love, but conscious love. And this is how you develop. So this is how you find, of course, in the Bible, the many ways in which you can awake all the explanation of how humanity will walk in evil and for evil, or in good for, and, and in good. And... Uh, is a tree of good and evil that is the root, the point of departure in order to awake above or in order to awake below. Remember that. And that tree of good and evil is your sexual energy. The most you purify or the more you purify your sexual matter, the best. Because then you are advancing in the positive way. Do you have questions? <clears throat> that single person, if you're transmuting your sexual energy to that single person, and you're also... Okay. All right. Um, if you, as a single person, if you're transmuting your sexual energy and you're eliminating your ego, can you still be a soothsayer? Well, uh, all of us have a lot of soothsayer inside because we have ego. But of course, that's why uh, the Matthew Samuel wrote a book called uh, Endocrinology and Criminology. And when you have to study your own ego. When you start awakening and your ajin start seeing things, your pineal gland and your pituitary gland, you have to understand that you have the ego within, the soothsayer within. So you have to meditate in what you see and to wait and not to utter any words beforehand. Because sometimes it's the ego that is seeing things and sometimes infraconsciousness or infraclarvoyance can develop, meaning 
that you go out of your body and you go down into inferno and you see the people doing wrong things. If you don't know that you are there, you think, oh, that uh, the person is behaving in the wrong way without uh, uh, knowing that is the ego of that person behaving in clipoth in that way. Or sometimes you can see the past lives of other people when they were behaving also in their own way and not the present life, which is called subconscious clairvoyance. Or sometimes you can see even your projections of your own ego, which is called unconscious clairvoyance. That is relation with the ego. So all of us have that. The experiences that you have in the internal plane sometimes relate to unconscious clairvoyance, your own projections. Sometimes relate to the subconscious clairvoyance, things from the past. Sometimes to infraconscious clairvoyance, things from hell, which act there, which happen there. And if you don't know, if you are not disciplined, if you don't know a lot of psychology and Kabbalah, you can uh, utter uh, a false judgment. And this is how in the Gnostic movement there were many disciples of the Master Samael on the earth that starts doing that. Oh, it's on the internal planes, this and that. So such and such fellow is falling, is doing this and that. He's a vampire, is evil, whatever. And there are a lot of uh, followers repeating the same thing. In other words, slander. That's wrong. Because all of us are evil, in other words. In order to be a complete conscious or supra-conscious clairvoyant, you have to have zero ego. No ego at all. As long as you have ego, be careful because you can uh, utter a false judgment. And this is precisely what we have to understand when we arrive at this knowledge. Remember that we are 97% ego, so... In the moment that we are awakened, that this just transform that awakening into positive. Because uh, all of us are more or less clairvoyant. And drugs, LSD, marijuana, mushrooms, all of that put in activity, soothsayers. They awake, yeah, so what? This is not the way to awake positively. Meditation, annihilation of the ego, is the only way to awake positively. Yes? So, a soothsayer awakened could travel to any dimension in the internal planes? In any dimension in Klippoth. Not up there. Soothsayer is the ego. Remember this. When we said soothsayer, we are referring to the ego of the person. When we said a prophet, we're referring to the knock of that person, which is chesed, the individual spirit of each one of us. But as long as we have the ego, we have a lot of soothsayer. And with that awakening, we can travel in Klippoth. But a soothsayer, an ego, cannot go into the superior dimensions. No, the devil cannot enter into heaven. Only Hesed and Hesed can investigate in hell. You see? Hesed, our own particular spirit, our own particular God, can go to hell to investigate and to heaven. But the ego cannot do that. The ego can only go to Klippoth because it belongs to Klippoth. To where Hesed belongs? No. The ego cannot go there. And that's the big difference. <coughs> Do you have another question? Yes? What's the, what is it, the pro, you mentioned the proxy of Daniel. Mm -hmm. What is that? What is that? Daniel, uh, the chapter 12 of uh, the book of Daniel. Uh, yeah, the chapter 12 of the book of Daniel talks about uh, the times of the end. When Michael, which is the logos of the sun, which is the solar force, the Christic force, will come and, uh, and deliver the knowledge of 
This is the knowledge will, be, will increase, says the, the book of Daniel, in these times of the end. Which in this moment, of course, knowledge, that, gnosis, is increasing. And some of them that sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. Remember, that dust of the earth are the archetypes that 22 arcana represented in Adama, which is the physical body. Those archetypes can awake above or below. If they awake below, they are lost. Have to be, the ego has to be disintegrated in order for those archetypes to be free, which are, of course, in other words, in synthesis, Israel. So Israel can go down to hell or can go up to heaven. It depends on the actions of each one of us. When Israel goes down and then the ego is disintegrated and is lost in the inner Zion. There are two Zions. The Zion of hell and the Zion of heaven. Yes? The question is, in meditation, when you see the, uh, the ego, when you're, your ego, when you're killing the ego, are you seeing the image of the ego as a picture, as a graphic? Well, when you meditate in any of your egos, you have to bring into your mind the event related with that meditation. Because when one is meditating in one particular ego, had to be from facts. When I do it, for instance, let's say that uh, I was insulted and my self-esteem was hurt. Then my anger emerged. So then when I go and meditate, I bring into my mind that event. And I see, etc., what was around me, what happened, the, even the face of the person that was insulting me. That's called memory. And of course, I see in myself the way that I reacted. That's precisely the picture, also the images that you have to see. Reality, based on facts. And on those uh, events and that reality, you comprehend, you understand your ego. You see, without understanding, without comprehension, there is no annihilation. Why? Because understanding, comprehension, in Kabbalah is Bina. Bina is the Holy Spirit. Bina is the Divine Mother. The two forces of Bina, the Holy Spirit, are comprehension, understanding. So you cannot cheat Bina. It says, My mother disintegrated me this ego of anger. And then the, the Divine Mother, who is understanding, who is comprehension, says, I don't see any of myself there. How I'm going to annihilate something that you didn't comprehend? When you comprehend something, I know it. Why? Said the Divine Mother. Because I am comprehension. I am understanding. In other words, I am Bina. You see? So the Divine Mother demands comprehension. Demands her own substance. Hmm? So when you meditate, you have to uh, have that. And if you have that, your Divine Mother says, okay. I know, because I am that, so I annihilate your ego. That's why that uh, technique that uh, Gnostics teach, that you annihilate my Divine Mother, annihilate me this, that is happening in this very moment. That's impossible, because there is no comprehension, there is no understanding there. That's, that's not possible. You have to reach that. Uh, you are, so the question is, we, ha we don't have to leave the person that uh, caused that ordeal in front of us or to accuse the person or to hate the person. No, of course. The person we have to love. This is called love your enemy. And the person you have to love it. If the person insulted you very badly, is your enemy. So, love him. How do you want to love him? By comprehending the good that this person is doing to you. 
when you comprehend. If you comprehend the ego, say, oh, this person did a lot of good to me. Because without this person insulting me, I wouldn't discover this anger and this pride and this consciousness that I liberated and this comprehension. So then you develop love. It says, I really love this person and I am going to look for this person again and only to receive more benefits. In other words, more insults. That's to love your enemy. This is how you psychologically understand that. To love your enemy. But if you don't do that, you don't comprehend, then you'll develop masochism. That's bad. Right? Yes? <coughs> Faith. Faith or, or fate. Or yeah, of course. We, we, we start following what the people say, you know, that uh, we don't need to see God. Well, well, really, we need to see God. The eyes have to be opened, you know. And uh, when you see God, you can receive the instructions di directly from your inner God. And then you follow the first law. First law, not the second, which is just written, right? And of course, he who sees God face to face has to die. Psychologically, of course. Nobody sees God face to face without dying. Do you understand that? It is written. People think that uh, when they see God, they will to fall physically dead, right? Because they saw God. No. It means that you cannot see God if you don't die. Or you are not dying, psychologically speaking. Sometimes uh, God uh, have mercy he can appear in front of you. That's good. Whether we have ego or not, we are not uh, worth it. Or worthy. You're right. Of his mercy. And remember, when we say that we can see God, we are not saying that the devil, the ego that we are, can see God. We are saying that he said, Enoch, that archetype can see God. But the ego cannot. The ego has to be annihilated, destroyed. Do you have another question? Thank you very much.